All right, guys. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, a vinyl that I got. I was so excited about this. I wish I could be excited about some new band like this today, but it just doesn't happen, right? I know what you're going to say. Dude, you got to get out there. I'm like, you know. Uh, anyway, you know, nowadays I just, you know, it's, it's more about me playing, right? So I get excited about you know, myself playing, but then also legacy stuff like this, right? So the, there's just no artist like this. You know, we'll, we'll talk about this in a bit. So I got this uh, for $20. So it was like $30 on eBay. See, now these vinyls are a lot more expensive. You know, original pressing, obviously. Everything I collect is original pressing. So, I mean, if I had had this, I would have like got, a, you know, sold it for like a dollar or two. So... If you got original pressings, uh, they might be worth, you know, more than what you think, right? So, anyway, so uh, the guy put it on there for $30. It's probably some pawn shop or somewhere. somewhere. And then um, I made an offer and I said, I'll, I'll give you 20 for it. And then he took it. So I got it. So, anyway, the weirdest thing about this is, is that, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually signed. Uh, the guitar player, remember, I'm in a, a Zeppelin band now or at least it looks like it's going to be. And me and him, you know, we, we used to be in the Dio band. So, me and the guitar player. So, uh, I sent a picture of this to him and said, who do you think this is? But so we couldn't figure it out because this doesn't look like... So the players on here are basically uh, Dio, the vocals, obviously. Him and Mickey Lee Soul, keyboards, wrote all the songs. Then is Gary Driscoll, Steve Edwards, and Craig Gruber, and then Mark Mouser, percussion. So all these people, Dio, any Dio interview, old interview, he always talks about, you know, these people, right? So we can't, I'll put it up again, we don't know what that is, or I don't think somebody would be, would have just signed it to sign it and made a joke about it. So I do believe it's real, but we don't know who it is. So it doesn't look like, because, you know, now... You can kind of look to see, okay, what does Mickey Lee's soul signature look like, right? So this doesn't look like anything. I don't know what to make of it. So anyway, that's the first conundrum in this one. Uh, great album. Absolutely brilliant album, I think. And Dio's voice is just, you know, crazy. So the reason why we want original pressing is because the original pressing is where you can hear the analog uh you know, you can hear it in analog, and it hasn't been digitized and put into analog, which is basically a waste of time, right? So you can hear the drums more, right? Rather than the CD, it sounds more analog, right? So the songs on here are Black Swampy Water, Prentice Wood, When She Smiles, Good Time Music, Side 2, Liberty Road, Shock and Boogie, Wonder World, Streetwalker. When you buy something like this, you're taking a chance because you don't know where it's going to, you know, uh, skip or anything like that. Looks like the first song had like a skip in there, but then it was dirty. So maybe when I, you know, uh, I listen to the whole thing, when I sort of clean it, maybe it'll go away, right? So this was when Dio was developing his voice. So remember, I have this one. So when I bought it, this is the one I really want to talk about, but I want to talk about this too. So I got this one before this one. So this is the, uh, this is the one with, you know, Carolina County Ball. So, <clears throat> I, actually, I actually used to have the version of this record with them all standing. Remember that one where they're standing and, you know, uh, looking over like a balcony? I actually had that. I gave it to my friend Todd. So, I hopefully he still has it in the Bay Area because at the time I was like death metal, you know. So, I did like Dio, but I listened to this and I said, man, I can't really get into this. So I gave it to him. So uh, hopefully he's held on to it. You know, he's held on to it. But anyway, this, like I said, this was one of the... Uh, so Elf produced three albums, the f very first one, and then I believe this is number two and this is number three, right? So I don't have the very first one on uh, LP. So this is cool. Like I said, you can hear the drums a lot more, but this is not what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about this one. 
So uh, you can really tell Dio's uh, like his modern voice is starting to really you know take shape in this one. You know, a black swamp of water, swamp of water, yeah, yeah. You know, I should save my voice tonight. I'm singing Zeppelin. Uh, anyway, just you know the fullness of his voice, like I just did, right? That kind of you know stuff is coming in. I used to sing in a Dio cover band, anyway. And then we did uh, we did a song off the first album uh, live, I think. But we could never find people to do this or, or this one. So, Prentice Wood, great song. Prentice Wood, you know, and then, you know, When She Smiles. All these songs are really good, you know. Good time music's coming back again. Liberty Road, good. Shotgun Boogie, right? It's like a really fast song. This is like the fastest I ever heard Dio deliver lyrics, you know, because Dio usually doesn't uh, sing as fast as like Rob Halford or like, you know, Bruce Dickinson, right? He's usually kind of laid back and his uh, phrasing, there's usually a lot of room to it. Right, it's not like a full-blown legato line, but here he shows us that he can actually, you know, he can basically do anything. So shock and boogie. There's that, you know. I think this is a cover song. He goes da 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 da. It's a, you know, it's all lyrics, right? Da 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 A shock and boogie will go down, go down. Great song. And then Wonder World. Uh, that's another great song. Streetwalker, great song. Streetwalker is a really great song. You know, Streetwalker. You've been so good to me. I need the key. Street Walker, yeah, yeah. Just like a lonely hearted stranger, you too. It's the best I can do with no key reference. Anyway, Street Walker, in the back of it, it says, uh, in a fire burning higher, trying to burn the sun. I think that's the lyric in there, right? In a fire, burning higher, something like that. Uh, anyway, original pressing, great album, great vocals, obviously. Uh, I could talk about this for six hours. Anyway, you know, I was, I, the biggest thing I want to talk about, let me get rid of this pop-up here, is that uh, I was so happy to get this. Like, I was just like, is it here? Is it here? And then I, you know, and I opened it and then I played it, you know, and it was just like, you know, a child, you know, getting a Christmas present, basically early Christmas present here. So, uh, you know, it's just sad that like kids nowadays, right, they'll never go through something like this to where they're going to be this excited to open up something like this and then hear it for the first time. Like, you know, uh, like rock people were from like the 50s, 60s, 70s and, you know, uh, and so forth. So it's just crazy. It's just they won't, you know, ever feel, right? I feel it because I'm a musician and I've been a longtime fan, obviously. So, you know, and I sing this stuff. So, you know, that's probably why I'm like, you know, over enthused about this. Like, I want to hear Dio's voice. I want to hear what he's doing. So, like, I can, you know, take from something, you know, that he's doing or, you know, something like that. Or, you know, or singing stuff, right? I used to sing, you know, I've sung, uh, you know, all the songs I've sung, you know, all his popular songs that shows Sabbath, Rainbow, even Elf, like I said. Uh, so, I don't know, man. It's just, see, you know, it's just sad that music's basically died. Right? And if you doubt that, <clears throat> right, when's the last time you were, you know, as excited as I was to buy something? So, right, it's just, I think that the time for music is gone because uh, we have so many digital distractions. We have artists who aren't being sort of, you know, authentic, right? Most of the artists today, it's just more like a business. Let's do this. Let's do this. You know, let's get, you know, famous and popular. It's all about the views and clicks, right? So uh, you're never going to find something as authentic and original as this. I would love to put together a band like this, which is basically like blues, honky-tonk, you know, that kind of, you know, southern, you know, uh, swampy kind of blues. I would love to put together a band like this. But, you know, you'd never find people to do that, I think, you know, right? A band, you know, the problem with the band is that it has to be sort of perfect, right? It's got to be people 
who kind of, you know, looks the part, who are interested in doing it, uh, who can write music, right? It's got to have all these things. So you usually have like one out of like five things, or maybe you'll have two out of five things, or sometimes you even have three out of five things, but you got to have all those things, right? There's got to be, you know, interest. There's got to be time, right? People don't want to, I've had bands break up simply because they don't have money for, uh, uh, to go practice, right? Tonight, I'm going to go, you know, uh, do a Zeppelin thing and, you know, the four of us. So I had to pay for it in advance. Now everybody owes me $15, right? $15 a piece. I've had bands break up simply because they said, man, I don't have $15 to put in every week. So, I mean, that's kind of the sad status of this. In the place that I used to jam, uh, they wanted $45 an hour, which is, that's crazy, man. I only paid $30 an hour, even in Burbank in like this huge, you know, exhibition kind of room to where they have like couches and they have like an actual kind of mini stage and things like that, where bands used to play in uh, to like record executives, right? That was only $30 an hour. These guys are, you know, want like $45 an hour. I'm like, damn, today we paid 30. Uh, but anyway, that's the, what I'm saying is that bands can't even get started. You know, there's no sort of drive, you know. And, you know, the thing with Dio is that he really started, you know, at the bottom. Right. He really started there and he played like, you know, little places and he played like frat parties. And he said a lot of the friends he made there were still friends all the way to the end. Right. And then like they played, you know, uh, colleges and then, you know, they kind of and then they got signed to basically the Purple Records, which was uh, Deep Purple. Right. Uh, let me see. Well, this is MGM Records, says Hollywood. But I think the management was under the Deep Purple. And then after that, you know, Richie Blackmore, you know, took him into form Rainbow and then, you know, all that kind of stuff. But uh, I like how these two things, his voice is completely different. You can still tell his deal, but he's, a you know, basically got that kind of that fuller deal sound like I kind of demonstrated, right? A shock and boogie going to go down. That song's called Shock and Boogie. Uh, anyway, guys. Tell me what you think about this. Great. Really great album. Oh, produced by Roger Glover. So, I guess that makes sense. So, see, a lot of this is about, uh, you know, forming your network. I guess even today it's like that, to where forming your network, to where, you know, Roger Glover produces this, and then, he, you know, he's doing Butterfly Ball, and he goes, hey, I know a singer who's really good, and then brings Dio in. You know what I mean? All this stuff sort of, you know, works together, right? This is what you should be doing if you're forming a band is that, you know, you should be forming a community with your other local bands. Sadly, we don't have that today because what do local bands do? They don't want to form a community, right? Today, every show I've played has been like this. The other bands will sort of bring in their entourage and then they'll take their entourage with them. They don't want their people to stay for your band. Right? It's very selfish like that today where people don't come in for the night. Right, They come in for their band and then they leave. These are not true fans. They're basically just acquaintances of these bands. And then, you know, uh, right? So it's not like this old kind of uh, aesthetic where people go out for the night and enjoy all the bands, you know? So in a lot of ways, yeah, music and rock is dead. I think it's just because, you know, it's just times change. And then now I think people... I don't think people want to hear loud bands anymore because when you go in, I remember when I played the Dio shows, I would book all the shows, right? So I booked this metalcore band and then they were like, dude, we're going to bring in like 30 people, man, 50 people. And then they brought zero people. They didn't even bring one person, right? Because nobody cares about startup bands. They're an original band. There were five people sitting in the dive bar already because, you know, most of these shows are dive bar shows. And we go over there. They play. Immediately after they started playing, right, they cleared the bar because no one wants to hear loud music anymore No, one, because you can't talk over it, right? So this is why rap and hip-hop are, are bigger because even though it's loud, it's kind of a good loud to where it's the bass and the drums, right, and you can actually talk over it with a rock band with some guy screaming like this, right? They basically cleared the place and they basically emptied the place, right? People just basically left. And, you know, they just, they weren't bad. They just sounded like a metalcore band. So nobody really wants to listen to this stuff. 
And then we went on and then we had some people come over, right? But anyway, the point is, is that, like I said, no one really wants to hear loud music. Nowadays, the art of it is gone to where it's like you have people trying to bring in like a Marshall amp, you know, a JCM 800 into a room like this and crank it to like six, right? Just blows everybody out of the water. You can't hear the singer. You can't hear the drummer. Uh, the people walk out because no one wants to, you know, sit there and, you know, for it to be that loud, right? So it's just just a progression, you know, of basically culture and time. I think it's that, I don't think a new band today is gonna to get discovered grassroots because simply because it's not that time where people during this time, I think they enjoyed live bands and live music and things like that. And then, you know, now it's like, let's just turn it up as loud as possible and just blast everybody out. You know, just a different kind of thing to where people don't wanna be in there anymore, right? So this is why startup bands never get started because you can't form a you know a, a fan base. But it's sad. It's really sad that like you know like this complete art form is just dead. You know. Anyway, guys, I just want to talk to you about that. How excited I was and happy I was to get this. Uh, you know, I guess you have to be a. a a lover of music to appreciate it nowadays. Nowadays, music is just sort of like, kind of like a, a background music. Or like, you know, music that you just buy to, or like, you know, or sampled or something like that. And it's just, you know, it got devalued because you don't, you know, pay for it anymore, right? So it's just like, and then it's just kind of watered down. Everybody's doing it, you know, so labels can't control it. So, I mean, it's just saturation. That's what I think killed music. Anyway, guys, if you're a Dio fan, you probably liked this one. I will talk to you later.